Feel good, sore, kicked his knee. So I got a couple of knots in here, but uh, other than that, I feel good, I feel strong. He was stronger than I expected. Uh, you know, I kept going for the key lock or the Kimura, gassed my arms a little bit, which stopped the elbows. So, but he was tough, man, he had a lot of heart. I give a lot, a lot of props to him, five day notice, six day notice fight. Throws you off training for a lefty for four weeks, and this is the second time in a row my opponent backed out last minute on me so training for a lefty and then circling that way i had to reverse everything so i threw my striking off because i was so used to going that way away from the left hand mm -hmm. and the switch it kind of threw me off my striking wasn't as crisp as i would have liked it and uh, i threw a couple of le uh, left switch kicks fortunately i kicked his knee pretty good right here locked my leg up a little bit mm -hmm. but other than that he even hit me with a good i think a good right in the beginning mm -hmm. once i took his strongest punch i knew i was okay at first no. it looked like he was trying to bully and use everything he had. Yeah. Then you start working body and body. Did mm -hmm. you know instantly this is going to pay off? Yeah, crazy. yeah. I could feel when I hit him, I could feel his body go lifeless. When I cut his eye open with an elbow, I felt his whole body go from that to that. And I was like, he hit me, it hurt. I hit him, he cringed, and I knew I had the power. So I knew I just had to wear him down. The only thing I regret doing is trying to submit him so many times because it gassed my arms a little bit. You know, I'm usually known as the knockout guy, not the submission guy. So I think my body wasn't used to that tension. And then to try to swing again threw me off a little bit. Did you notice how bad he was hurt after the first round? His corner had to come out to get him and yeah. bring him back over there. Did you think he was coming out for the second? I he was coming back out. And he's sitting on the stool and I'm looking at him. I'm like, all right. And he's still sitting there. I'm like, I thought they were going to stop it. And he didn't even know where he was. But, you know, he came back two more rounds afterwards. What heart. I, he's going to be a, a good asset to the UFC once he gets his his control down a little bit, you know. You got into a little bit of trouble in the third, didn't you? Uh, I think he got your back. Got my back, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I was never in danger. I think it was actually worked against him. Once I mm -hmm. got back into his guard, I knew he was done. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my arms were just dead from the damn key locks. Excuse my French, but uh, I really regret going for all those. I even had his arm locked one point where I felt it starting to move. I was like, I thought I had him in that one, but what what uh, heart he has, you know. What's your inner monologue though when you're doing that and somebody's still there and they're still coming back? In your head, you're like, Jesus, what the <laughs> hell is going on here? You know, I, you know, Kurt's like, keep striking, keep striking. Unfortunately, my arms were dead and I was trying to. We were just like, oh man, nothing's working, nothing's working. Plus the adrenaline. But you know, uh, my coach O'Cohen put me through some wrestling and Dan, uh, Matt Jennings. Their cardio was always there, but my arms were dead. You know. Did you watch the fights last night? And if so, was that any sort of inspiration for you tonight coming in? Because it was. Such a great night? <clears throat> I usually have a rule: don't watch work before you go to work. It puts things in your mind. I did watch some of the highlights. Conor McGregor, he really motivates me. That he believes in himself so much. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Even if he wasn't the greatest fighter, he believes in himself, and it gives me hope that even when I'm an underdog. I've been the underdog for like the last five fights and I've knocked almost every one of them out. And I'm still the underdog all the time. Not this fight, but you believe in yourself, you do great things, and that's what I think he stands for. So he was the only person I watched the highlights of. That's interesting too because so many people have a problem with the way he promotes himself. Of course they do because he actually does what he says and they don't. Why wouldn't you hate that? And I think anybody who hates on a guy who says, I'm going to knock this guy out and does it, you're hating on a guy that's been saying he believes in himself. Hypocrites. You know, he's a true leader and he's great for our sport. I look up to him. Robbie Lawler, guy who was almost out of the top, is now the top. I look up to him too. He was the first guy I ever seen knock a guy's eyebrow off, and I'm like, wow, I want to fight like him. They're warriors, and I, I love to follow in their footsteps. You know? Do you feel like that card is overshadowed this one at all? Which one? This. Oh, that? yeah. I mean, come on. You can't top that card. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be like, hey, our fights are just as good. We're up and comers. Those are the top of the food chain right now, you know? I hope to one day be on a card like that, but you gotta keep winning and knocking people out. I don't hate on that. I look up to it. Question for you concerning Reebok. You know, it's the first weekend that the guys are wearing this, and ladies, of course. Um, what's your thoughts on it? Is it comfortable? How do you feel in it? I, I love the uniform thing. I, I love seeing my coaches get treated better. The new locker designs. I think everything Reebok's bringing to us, we don't have to look for sponsors. You know, we all have our little things that annoy us, 
uh, which I don't need to say, but what Reebok did, look at the uniforms, look how professional we look now. I like it, you know, I, I stand by it. And when you start, when he switches, when the opponent switched, and it's, a, it's Southpaw to Orthodox, what's the first thing you do? Do you start thinking ground up, like I gotta keep my foot on the outside of his, or do you, yeah. what do you start doing to train for that? Well, you know, the other guy we knew wanted to stay on the outside. I knew Dominic would attack me. The first thing we said was we got to keep moving side to side because Dominic comes straight. The other guy, Marsilio, came straight. So getting the first thing is to go the opposite way. But when you're doing that for four weeks, your muscle memory is like, go that way. I even got caught with the right hand because I leaned back and went that way. Boom, I got hit when I should have leaned that way and went that way. So yeah, a couple of things did play factor. Even though I drilled it for the last couple of days, it's not going to take the three and a half weeks of me going to the left. So it did throw me off a little bit, you know. I just wish the guys that I was going to fight would stay there. You know, stop backing out, guys. Come on. Dominic looked really emotional at the end of the fight. Did you say anything to him afterwards? You know what he said to me? Help me up, man. Be a sportsman. I said, of course I'll help you up. And I hugged him. And this kid takes a fight on with me five days, six days before that. He gave everything he got. And I can't wait to see him after this fight. He's one of the strongest guys I've fought. And he's up and coming. And I'm glad he's in the UFC. He's going to be an asset, and he's going to be great. I know he is. I hit him hard, and he kept coming. So I hope he takes that to heart, you know? So, yeah, he's a great guy.